So it's a tourney. Gigi has a new hat for it. Uh I am not ready. I am not mentally prepared for this. Uh okay. Uh no. Interesting. Surely the most legal, legal and upstanding documentary. <laughs> I realized I was playing Ace Attorney games in chronological order because I started with the great Ace Attorney games, which take place in the past. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting because now I'm technically going into the past in terms of the release order. Play the first turnabout? Yes. I think. Uh, oh, I guess it's supposed to be blood. It looked a little too pink. Yeah, that's more blood-like. Damn it, why me? I can't get caught not like this. Wait. Someone like him? What? We get to- Wait, what? <laughs> We're actually seeing who did- who does crime? This is throwing me off. I actually had to figure out who the criminal was most other times. Now I actually know who did it. Isn't this gonna like create some sort of bias? Uh, August 3rd, 47, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. All oh, the first two cases are so pretty normal. I don't remember any of the Great Ace games doing that, which is a little interesting. Like, you have, like, a more... I guess, pin target, I guess, for a couple of them? But you're mostly trying to defend them. And usually they're not the actual culprit. culprit. Except for that one dude. Right? <laughs> oh, hiya, Chief. Phew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you. And your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before the case? This is conflict of interest? Granted, he's a defendant. Sure, so at least you're not a judge. <laughs> or prosecutor. Still a little weird, but uh, okay. I guess that's more normal than prosecuting someone, you know, at least. Yes. Actually, I owe him my owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. <laughs> Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death despair oh i'm gonna do it i'm gonna die <laughs> sounds like he wants to die <laughs> um yeah <sighs> nick hey hey, hey there larry <laughs> dude i'm so guilty tell them i'm guilty <laughs> give me the death sentence i'm afraid i i ain't afraid to die <laughs> dude what <laughs> What's wrong, Larry? 
Oh, it's all over. I, I I'm finished. I'm finished. <laughs> I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? So, love her, crushed someone. Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? Newspapers say it was you. Oy. My name is Phoenix Wright. Uh, here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Isn't this your friend, Phoenix? Sure, okay. <laughs> Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. You know, Naruhoto had a little bit more competent of best friend. I'm just saying. <laughs> Fine. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. You have an unfortunate last name, sir. <laughs> In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He had a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him one. Which is why I took the case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. Uh, sir, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. You look familiar, sir. More hair than I remember. Okay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. This seems so weird to me, because outside of playing the games, especially, because I've only seen memes, and like, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Phoenix seems a bit more confident in those bits. Him being the um, defense-ready Naruhoto like is throwing me off. <gasps> Naruhoto had a reason for that, though. He didn't go to school for this shit. <coughs> uh, Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yeah, I thought Phoenix was confident. <laughs> Oh, I thought Naruhoto was a little bit of the fuck up one. Not, I get Phoenix first trial being a little nervous, so I guess. I do know because he becomes a hobo at some point, so that's going to be an eventual thing. As soon as I go to stream, my throat and nose just want to give me trouble. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I'm... I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Wait, do we have jury? Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Handshaking, eyesight fading. 
The test will consist of a few simple questions, answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Larry Butts. The defendant, well that's Larry Butts, your honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name. Phew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait... uh-oh. Uh... okay, I know it's Sydney. <laughs> it's uh... no, no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim, of course. I know the victim's name. <laughs> I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. <laughs> I think I feel a migraine coming on. I feel you, Mia. I feel you. <laughs> Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? I, I know it's Sydney. Um, the victim's name is Sydney Stone. Correct. Now tell me what was the cause of death. She died because she was hit with a blunt object. I watched it happen. <laughs> she was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see, the court accepts it into evidence. Okay, right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. <coughs> yeah, I got it. Okay, I can't rotate this yet. Okay. I didn't bother pulling out a controller because I figured this is just kind of point clicky. That controller seemed not needed. Uh, Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? <laughs> Pay attention, you don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything... unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily, this could be bad. Dude was already screaming that I'm guilty and let them hang me. <laughs> well, maybe not let them hang me, but ready to die. <laughs> Not guilty, ready to die. <laughs> ah, Mr. Butts, it is... N is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Oh! That wasn't mentioned a few seconds ago, I think. I thought that was just the sap dating, not... I thought you were the dating sap, not the ex-sap. <gasps> hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? <laughs> I wasn't dumb. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. <laughs> or just ghosted. <laughs> 
nowadays. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies. All of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport... According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. The uh, victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder. Hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> Oh, what? I know this came out like years ago. Phoenix, right? Not the trilogy, but like the original game. 2001? Daddy's sugar. I feel like that terminology is more common now and was less common when it was thrown into this, I feel. It was still around, but I didn't hear it as often. Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Now, okay, this is... Ugh. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Isn't this, like, slandering the victim? Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... I feel like that's a bad option. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That's cheating, she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her... Ah, uh, uh, you did not. That text... I thought I... Uh... Yeah, I said off. Because it goes too fast when it auto skips through text for me to actually read it all out but i'm pretty sure he just said he'll die and then meet her in hell <laughs> what the fuck no uh let's continue with the trial shall we i believe the accused motive is clear to everyone yes quite Oh boy, this is not looking so good. <laughs> Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. <laughs> that... Oh, oh, uh, he went. What do I do? Uh, answer honestly. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was there. I went. Order? Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. That objection <laughs> It's like a gremlin popping out of a hole. <laughs> I 
Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies the matter. First, who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. <sighs> order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. <laughs> On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Schwitt to the stand. Uh, Mr. Sewitt, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Schwitt, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. That was an official witness account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to the nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. This is... Oh, no, this is bad. <laughs> I see no chance. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? Though we did have him tell the truth. What the fuck? <laughs> well, one we told him not to answer, and another one said we told him to tell the truth, and he told the truth. What? <laughs> Game? <laughs> Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? But he didn't see his girlfriend! Isn't that the truth? So I finished saying, why didn't you tell the truth? That part's what's confusing me. Uh, yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sewitt used was one of those. Your Honor. I have records of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Huh? What exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? <laughs> Your claim is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? <laughs> You hold the key, it's in the evidence. Compare the witness testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, uh, okay. Open the court record with tab and point out contradictions in the testimony. Okay. Okay, Q is pressed, so I can start also asking different 
questions. From noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Uh, Time of death was between... I turned up looked inside the apartment and I saw her lying down moving. I called and afraid to go inside. Thought to call the police. Uh... Um... She was dead. This can't be right. Right? You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Their statement deck directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody uh, to... Uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Like, for real, that seems like a glaring oversight for your fucking alibi. <laughs> oh, that, um, uh, uh, Fucking gremlin. <laughs> this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. He seemed... Very certain in his testimony. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Schwitt. So it. Uh, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? Nah, um, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time it was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? Guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. This is like the worst excuse for lying ever. <laughs> Oh, I heard the time because she must have been listening to a taped program? That sounds... just stupid. <sighs> hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right? You know what to do. I've got this one. Do I? Really? <sighs> no, wait a second. Also not possible if there was a blackout. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, it was coming from the television, so this would be present E? How could she have a television program running if there was a blackout, sir? Hold it right there. The prosecution has already said that there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. I, well, <laughs> the defense has a point. 
Do you have any explan- Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Soit? No, I, I- I find it quite puzzling myself, quite. Ah, wait, who- wait, I remember now. Mr. Soit? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, your honor. Yeah, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sewitt. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense must cross it. Well, that one's fairly easy. He's saying the clock was used for the murder weapon. Didn't hear the time, saw it, and there was a table clock there in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Ugh. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence! Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sewitt. Hey, hey, I, I saw it there, okay? There's a- that's a clock. Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Pay. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it, and it says out the, it's the time out loud. Doesn't look like a clock I submitted as it is a statue, my apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problem with this testimony now? How can I... I mean... Yes? <laughs> Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in this witness testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock was to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Prove I was in there. Prove I went in there. Yeah. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. Okay, I thought we weren't going to jump that shark yet, but okay. <laughs> you struck her with a clock, and then the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order. In the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Soy, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless. Just look at the victim's witness. Yeah, no, victim witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I don't feel like he should answer that. <laughs> As not his lawyer, I don't feel like he should answer that. <laughs> I, 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 
that that day I I never look I the clock no I heard no I mean I saw what <laughs> You're just gonna throw your toupee off like that? That's... Okay. Okay. Oh. I need to recover. Okay. Ooh. You know, I didn't think you had a toupee until now. Ah. Uh. Okay. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It, it, it was him. I tell you, I saw him. He, he killed her and he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor. You claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Your Honor. The sound Mr. Shewitt heard was definitely this clock. The fact of which is clear if you simply... I mean, the only thing I can think of is... The... Try sounding the clock. Let's try sounding the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. That's certainly a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is thinker, after all. So we've heard, heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Now, Mr. Maine, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Uh, oh, it's three hours off. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Sewitt heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sewitt, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like this clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. <laughs> Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. It means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends a cross-examination of Mr. Frank Swit. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. Oh, I thought this was going to not be a thing anymore. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sewitt. Mia, yeah, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time downing the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. 
Right, right? Uh, can you think of a reason why the clock would be three hours slow? almost wants to say this like because she was coming from another country uh yes wait maybe I can prove it you must have evidence somewhere that can prove prove it right find it and let them have it well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already s running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Huh, tough words! Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. had just returned home from the bra on the day before the murder. As we know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it is 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the, her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sewitt, or should I say, Mr. Did It. Oh, that's so lame. <laughs> Did he die? What? <laughs> order, order, I say. He just foamed at the mouth and collapsed. Well. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, he, um, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And I find the true culprit at the same time. I feel like you're going to say that a lot out of me, because apparently that's how these cases are structured. Uh. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds a defendant, Mr. Larry Butts... Not guilty. And with that, this court is adjourned. Turns out that Frank Sweet was the... was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see what people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sweet let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sewitt grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Saw it? Mr. Saw it? Oh, good. Okay, there's gonna be a lot of those, aren't they? That also explains why the thing read like 825, I think? Because I don't think it was that late in the day. Because they went into court at like 10, and then it said 825. He 
you, I can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief! I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You forgot your own, you fought your own battles in there. Except for he was about to lay down arms when you told him to pick it up. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. <laughs> Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait. No. I mean bad. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Larry, your innocence. The case is closed. <laughs> But, but my Cindy Windy. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, the cringe. Cindy Windy's gone, man. And gone forever. <laughs> Larry, she was a. Uh... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. H Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts Innocent. I sure hope you like Larry, as you'll get to see plenty of him. Oh. Ah, Larry, please. <laughs> um, thanks, I really owe you one. But I won't forget this. Ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My tree? Are you hitting on the boss now? Oh no, I couldn't. She didn't even get your name right, dude. <laughs> hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. Why are we getting the murder weapon as a present? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shouldn't this be used in the other dude's trial for his conviction? The present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. D really? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. That's very convenient. Okay. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? It I was so into that chick. And and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you want to just cry? <sighs> you were ready to die cuz she wasn't in this world anymore and okay, fine. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Larry's reminding me of, like, the Ryuji Yosuke Junpei archetype from the Persona games. <laughs> like, the goofball jokester friend who gets into trouble. Are you sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Ain't right. Uh, don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Uh... Would it be the statue? I mean, she had it! Hey, check this out, Larry. Proof positive that you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is a clock that you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. 
Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things can change depending on how you look at them. Lou, you're not worried. <laughs> we never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. In order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why I, you became a lawyer was because of him. And yeah, part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks. Boss, are you hitting on Phoenix here? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave Mia. It's pro bono, Phoenix. It's your first trial. Beggars can't be choosers. I didn't know it then, but... That clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be- Oh, she- she's gonna die. Is, is she gonna die? Ah, uh, here's the thing. I know Phoenix survives. Mia seems like a character I haven't seen before. These are also going faster. 